Now.org. We are breaking with convention, war, peace, and the presidency. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez, and we're in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Well, with the Democratic National Convention about to begin here in the city of brotherly love, we look at the state of the Democratic Party. Many party leaders were hoping to use the convention to display party unity after the long primary fight between Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. But the past 72 hours have been surprisingly tumultuous. On Friday, Hillary Clinton named Virginia Senator Tim Kaine to be her running mate, angering many Bernie Sanders supporters who had hoped she would have picked a more progressive vice president. Uh, on that same day, WikiLeaks released 20,000 internal Democratic Com National Committee emails showing that some party operatives worked behind the scenes to discredit and defeat Bernie Sanders. Then on Sunday, Florida Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz resigned her post as Democratic National Committee chairwoman just hours before she was set to chair the Democratic Convention. Party vice chair Donna Brazil will act as the DNC's interim head through the election in November. To talk about these issues and more, we're joined by two guests. Jess McIntosh is with us. She's director of communications outreach for Hillary Clinton's campaign. And Norman Solomon is also joining us. He's coordinator of the Bernie Delegates Network. He is a delegate from California. Well, there has been a great deal of disarray in the Democratic Party, Jess, um, this weekend as a result of the emails that were released by our previous guest, um, by Julian Assange. Can you talk about what's happening right now? Well, I think that Democrats are looking forward to the week ahead. I'm, I'm glad that we moved past the story yesterday. I think Debbie Wasserman Schultz didn't want to be the story, and so she resigned. We saw a lot of... of very positive comments coming out from both former, both camps, now we're all on the same team, the Bernie folks and the Hillary folks, saying that Donna Brazil was an excellent neutral choice who everyone felt confident going forward. So hopefully that means that this week we get to focus on our really compelling message of putting families first and working for an economy that works for everybody, not just those at the top, because last week was terrifying. And I want to make sure that we take this minute when the American public is tuned into politics. I mean, obviously, if you're watching this show, if you're one of us, you're tuned in all the time. But most folks, this is the beginning of it. And we are going to be able to show a really clear contrast between the Republicans last week if we can focus on what our message is this week. So we have some amazing speakers tonight. We're going to hear from Senator Sanders. We're going to hear from Elizabeth Warren. I think it's going to be a dramatic difference from what we saw yesterday, and I'm excited to get started. And, and Norman, your reaction to the past week? I, I think Bernie Sanders is having a big meeting with his supporters before the opening of the convention mm -hmm. today, and you're, I guess you'll be there. Talk about that. That's right. Well, uh, we're expecting a lot of discourse today publicly and privately and through the week. Uh, there's no doubt that a very sharp contrast will be drawn between the Democratic mm -hmm. and Republican Party uh, nominees and hopefuls. That's a high jump over uh, very degraded standards. Uh, you know, anybody almost would be a contrast uh, to Donald Trump. And so I think a political context for all this uh, is that there is a real possibility that Donald Trump could be elected president. Yes. And some people for whatever reasons, have convinced themselves that it cannot happen. And I remember when it could not happen that Ronald Reagan could be elected president. I remember when it could not happen when George W. Bush could be elected president. So that is, I think, an overlap uh, between the Clinton and the uh, Ber Bernie Sanders uh, delegates. We understand the vit vital need to defeat Donald Trump. That said, the conduct of the Clinton campaign in recent days is a continuation of a policy which is corporate, which is disingenuous, and that represents the antithetical perspective from what progressives bring to the table. And so even without the leaked emails, even without the Tim Kaine choice, which I think is highly egregious from any progressive standard, there still would be enormous dissension at this convention. The mainstream media have totally missed that. They thought it was going to be tranquil. No way, because at the grassroots, where the punditocracy doesn't bother to delve, people are very upset. Norman Solomon, <clears throat> talk about this. I saw you at a news conference yesterday. Talk about the pick of Tim Kaine, and then I'd like to get Jess's response as the vice presidential running mate. Why are you so concerned? Well, in contrast to the front page of the New York Times and the Washington Post and the Spinmeisters, so many progressive delegates and progressives around the country are upset because rather than 
have any sort of olive branch, rather than reach out towards the 45% of the primary and caucus voters who opted for Bernie Sanders in the last many months, the Clinton campaign has stayed in the corporate mold, has chosen somebody for the VP slot who has opposed raising taxes on millionaires, who voted only one of a dozen Democrats in the Senate voting for fast track last year, somebody who uh, denigrated those who want a more progressive economic policy as losers, quote unquote. This is a guy, contrary to the PR, who's very much in the Clinton corporate mode. So we've got to get real about how she has chosen. I mean, it's too symbolic, I'd summarize it this way, too symbolic and substantive choices that Hillary Clinton has made in the, next, the last few days is to take Debbie Wasserman Schultz out of the scandal and give her, not throw her overboard, but put her high up an executive uh, suite of the uh, steamer that she is running for a campaign and actually put Debbie Wasserman Schultz in a high position of her own campaign this fall, the Clinton campaign. So that is a symbolic thumbing of the nose at progressive sensibilities. And then the choice of Kane is a profound abuse of progressive constituencies that we are going to have to deal with for many years to come, probably. Jess, your response? Sure. I mean, I think we saw this morning Bernie Sanders' campaign manager, Jeff Weaver, sit on the stage with Jennifer Granholm and say, we are on the same page because right now we're on the same page, we're on the same team, and it is so important that we talk about making our progressive ideals reality and stopping the barbarians at the gates that we heard from last week. And so that's what I want to focus on. I think it's the only productive thing to do, honestly. I, I love what the Sanders enthusiasm has done. I love the way it has pushed our platform farther to the left. I, I believe in those politics, and we have the most progressive party platform that Democrats have ever had. So coming into a convention, I want to celebrate that. So that's, that's what I'm going to do. I think Tim Kaine is somebody that we're all going to get to know a lot. I thought his rollout, his big speech with Hillary on Saturday was absolutely wonderful. And I love the fact that he's a liberal from Virginia who uh, is a civil rights attorney, which is something I didn't know, who is focused on immigration, who is focused on housing discrimination and redlining. I think there are things to love and dislike about every possible pick, but I'm excited to hear from him on Wednesday. I think that people are going to get to know more about him, um, and I'm looking forward to the ticket. Um, uh, I, I'd like to ask Norman about the issue of the platform. Is it, uh, uh, it seemed to me that there was quite a few uh, changes from the original Clinton platform as a result of the pressure of Bernie Sanders on, on a variety of issues, uh, social, uh, social security, minimum wage, uh, uh, f uh, college tuition. Uh, so there was a substantive change. But then uh, I guess your perspective is that Tim Kaine choice was t tacking to a little bit more to the center, right? There's only one decision that Hillary Clinton and her forces have made that can't be revoked or weaseled out of, and that is the choice of the vice presidential pick. So the platform is important, but at the end of the day, we don't remember platforms. They can be ignored. I don't think there's any question that we have the same enemy, Donald Trump, the neo-fascist, racist campaign of Donald Trump. We have the same enemy, the Clinton and the Sanders delegates, but we are not on the same page. When you read that platform, especially the foreign policy platform dictated by Hillary Clinton, it is a warmonger platform. Let's be blunt about it. And so there should not be a nanosecond of honeymoon between progressives in this country and a prospective or actual Hillary Clinton presidency. We've got to oppose all of these Wall Street and militaristic policies that are embodied, frankly, in what Hillary Clinton is saying and doing. Jess McIntyre. Obviously, I disagree. There's a reason why Bernie Sanders is going to be on the stage tonight. There's a reason why Elizabeth Warren is going to be on the stage tonight. There's a reason why our campaigns are coming together to make sure that we are not only defeating Donald Trump, but doing some really exciting things that put families first for a change in, in the country. I think that there is a lot to talk about in terms of the Democratic platform this week. I think we're going to talk about the economy. We're going to talk about national security. We're going to learn a little bit more about Hillary Clinton because as much as she has saturated politics for as long as I've been paying attention to politics, there's a lot about her biography that people don't actually know. There's a lot about her motivations and what drives her and what were the early fights of her life. And I think we're going to hear a lot about that from her friends and her family and the people who she has helped along the way. I mean, this is an incredible woman. And coming from the feminist wing of the progressive movement, I want to celebrate that, too. We're nominating a woman for president for the 
the first time. And I think we have devalued people who put women and families center in their platform in the progressive movement just as we do everywhere else. And I think it's incredible to have a moment to do that. So I'm really looking forward to this week. And I'm looking forward to working with my friends in the Bernie Sanders campaign. I've, I've had them all along. I've, I've kept them. And, and I think we're, you know, we're excited to have a beer together after the end of the day. We're going to break and then come back to this discussion. Our guests are Jess McIntyre um, of the Clinton campaign and Norman Solomon, a Bernie Sanders delegate from California. Stay with us.